Welcome to Rapportkommentarer direct with me. I have the CEO of Gabba there. His name is Michael Robin Witt. Very welcome to the show, Michael. Thank you. Now, I want to start with the numbers, but we're not going to dwell on it for too long. But the result, it amounted to minus 4.3 million sec, and that can be compared to minus 3.7 uh, one year ago. What's your uh, immediate um, explanation of this? And uh, is this what we should expect moving forward? Yeah, I mean, it's, of course, also has to do with the, we're at a different stage now, and in particular for the Q1, uh, there has been some bills that were carried over from the previous quarter. So uh, it's, it's nothing to worry about, nothing really unexpected, uh, to be honest. And, and what's the most uh, significant events of the first quarter in 2020? Well, the key event was, of course, getting the uh, authorization to conduct the MED study from the regulatory authorities in Portugal. Uh, extremely important. And uh, luckily, we got this authorization just before the general lockdown in many, in many countries, also Portugal, and uh, it, before the, the, the standstill. And even more luckily, uh, we did not, because of the pandemic, we got the delay in starting the trial and uh, so we didn't ha had to start the ha didn't, we we're in a position where we started the, the trial and then we had to interrupt it because that's really bad and that has happened to quite a number of other companies because then you divide the groups of, of healthy volunteers one pre-corona one after corona for example it's not good so now we can uh, work on contingency plans we can see how do we deal with uh, with the coronavirus and make sure that the data from the MAD study is as good as, as it can be. So you're saying that you're, uh, you feel kind of lucky that you didn't start the study because then you would have to interrupt it uh, because of the lockdown. Um, exactly. Very lucky, actually. The communication with officials in Portugal, do you have a, a continuous communication with them and have they given you a timeline of how long the lockdown will be? Uh, well, Portugal is starting to ease the uh, the, the the restrictions, but uh, we are in a very good dialogue with with, with Portugal, and uh, we actually develop the contingency plans together. I.e., uh, we develop a proposal. This and this measure should be taken, and then we agree or disagree or add others. So that is that is a process that's going on, and actually, we have always voluntarily decided to uh, delay the start of the, of the clinical trial a little bit. Uh, until the summer, because we want to make sure that that uh, everybody now is learning how to handle this uh, pandemic and how to conduct clinical trials in the pandemic. And once this sort of the first uh, big shock and learning process is over, then we can start our, our, our trial and then we will get the best data uh, possible, which is very important for us from the trial. So starting the trial uh, after the summer or sometime during the summer, um, how would you uh, expect, um, how much time do you think the, the, the study will take? Well, altogether, all uh, it will be a couple of months, something around three months or four, it can always take longer, there are always unexpected things. But I think it's, uh, it's very smart to uh, aim for uh, starting the, the the trial during the summer, because uh, of all that we know, chances that the coronavirus uh, pandemic will be uh, somewhat abated during the summer, and will be a little bit safer to conduct the the, the trial. And how has the the pandemic changed your your day to day business? Well, we do home office as much as we can. Uh, being located in Sweden, there hasn't been so much drastic change, but we try to separate uh, from each other, social distance. Uh, it's not always possible to do, but it's affected uh, uh, like everybody else. You know, it's also for the psychological effects that uh, I personally like to come to the office or to the lab and and interact with my colleagues. And I don't I don't think that you can do everything via Zoom or Teams. No, no, that's very true. It's a, it's a tough situation, uh, of course. Um, Michael, I'd like to ask you a few viewer questions, if that's all right. We have viewers that have sent in questions. And the first one is, um, where do you see Gabather in five years? Well, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very nice question, actually. I would love to see Gabather 
as a, as a, as a real player in the field of mental health. Uh, right now, we're focusing on, on, on medicine development, targeting the GABA receptor, but maybe in the future, we can do can do look at other areas uh, in, within the CNS, always developing therapeutics in that for, for, for mental health. That would be really good. I would like to see a number of compounds perhaps already on the way to the market, a number of license deals that can make us grow into, from a small to medium-sized biotech company within pharma and, uh, and uh, developing new pipelines also. So uh, within five years is a, is a, is a long time. And I like the the optimism of looking forward five years during the middle of the of the uh, coronavirus pandemic. So thank you for that question. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice vision that you painted here for us as well. Uh, hey, Michael. The, the next question is uh, more of a clarification, I guess. Um, the difference between the EEG study and the MAD study are, are they conducted together, or should they be viewed as totally separate studies? They are separate studies. The MAD study is the key study for us, where we look at safety among multiple doses of GT002. That is sort of our cornerstone, our basis. The EEG study is a study where we look at uh, if if uh, uh, GT002 modifies the electrical electrical activity in the brain, i.e., it's a more of a target engagement study, where we can prove that given orally, GT002 penetrates the brain modulates its activity in healthy volunteers. And that you can do via, via EEG. So it's a separate study. There's no EEG readout in the MAD study. Mm. The, the last question that I have for you is, how's the study for finding new molecules, the one conducted in, in Copenhagen, how's it coming along? That is actually coming along quite well. I the key thing was that uh, although uh, all activity was, of course, delayed regarding the clinical. We, the preclinical program that we have at Garbat there is in our own hands. We have our own labs in Sudetelje and Copenhagen, and uh, we can move this uh, this uh, development along by moving the resource, resources internally. So in that sense, we were sort of lucky again, twice lucky, if you wish, uh, regarding the, the preclinical development of the new compounds. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining me on LINK today. And I hope that the next time I see you will be back in the studio as usual. Um, I'm looking forward to that and uh, have a really nice weekend, Michael. Yeah, thank you. And I'm looking, also looking forward to back, go out in the real world again. So hopefully next time. <laughs>